out. <laughs> Yo guys, what's up? It's Dave from Open Source Gangster. So a little while back, I did a video on how to run Linux on an Android device. Well, fast forward, I'm back again. And now I want to show you how to run Ubuntu on your Android tablet. The process is just as facile and just as rewarding as before. So a few prerequisites in which you need for this project is a rooted Android tablet, of course, and you'll need at least two gigabytes of free space on your internal memory. Once you have all that ready, you're ready to get started. So without further ado, let's get this started. Okay, to iterate, what you want to do is connect your tablet to your computer. The connectivity is through MTP, as most Honeycomb tablets are. So if you're using Windows, the icon would show up as an MP3 device. Just double click. Then what you want to do is go to internal storage. Now once again, if you're on Windows, this should be fairly facile. If you're on Linux or Macintosh, this may be a little more difficult. Once inside internal storage, what you want to do is go to your Ubuntu folder and cut and paste the install busybox sh file to the root along with the busybox file to the root as well. Okay, to reiterate what just happened, what you want to do is you want to navigate to where you unzipped your Ubuntu uh, folder at. Because in Ubuntu folder, it's the ADB EXE. Now, if you already have ADB set up on your computer, you can just completely disregard this step. For everyone else, what you want to do is navigate to the folder that you unzipped. So, for everyone, else, for everyone your folder location is going to be different. But let's just say, for example, you unzip it to your My Downloads folder. What you do is type in CD, which means to change directory. Then you will go to Downloads. And then you will go CD Ubuntu. And then I don't have a Ubuntu folder there, but if you did, it will take you to Ubuntu. Okay, now what you're going to do is type in ADB Devices. If you don't see your device, that means that your driver is not properly installed and you have to go to your manufacturer's website and install the driver. Okay, so in order to get Ubuntu to work, we have to make sure we have BusyBox installed. So what we're going to do is type in ADB shell and then we'll type in SU for super user permissions. Then what you want to do from there is type in CD for slash SD card. Then from there, you want to type in sh install busybox.sh. And right now, I got an error saying that it already exists. So if you already have busybox installed, you'll get the same error as I do. Um, if not, it'll probably say install. Okay, so from here, we're going to go directly into Ubuntu. Ubuntu. So what we're going to do is go into CD, Ubuntu. Then now we're in Ubuntu folder. What we're going to do is type in sh Ubuntu, that sh. And then this big old jargon's going to come up. Uh, just ignore that. Then we're going to type in boot Ubuntu. And now you should be booted. And you should see root at localhost, and that means you are officially running Ubuntu. Now it's time to get to the actual GUI. Now what we want to do is run tight VNC server. 
before we can install it, we have to update the repository. And before we can update the repository, we have to change the source because the source is out of date and no longer active. So what you want to do is type in cat forge slash, I mean, sorry, greater than etc apt sources dot list. Now what you want to do is paste in a link. The uh, link will be in the description, so I'm not going to have you actually type it out. But it's going to be deb and long HTTP source. Do is paste in the link. Hit enter. Now from there, what you want to do, control, hit control D twice. Let's bring it back to localhost. Then what you want to do is type in apt git update. And it's going to get the updates like magic. Okay, almost there. Now what we have to do is actually get the VNC running. So what we're going to do is type in apt git install type VNC server enter. There we go. Now and hit yes. Okay, now from there, what you want to do is type in export user, all capitals, equals root. Okay, now you want to type in VNC server da dash geometry 1280 by 800. VNC server. Twelve eighty by eight hundred. Okay, now what we'll do is ask you for a password. Type in your password. And you can make up any password that you want. And hit no. And woohoo! Okay, so now we are ready to go and launch it on our tablet. Okay, so now let's go to our tablet and let's open this up now. So feel free to disconnect your USB cable. You do not need it any longer, but it doesn't hurt to still have it in. So what we're going to do is go to apps. And if you haven't already, download Android VNC, which is right there. So once in Android VNC, what you do is you type in a nickname, it could be anything. Password is what you have set when you are doing it on a computer. So I already typed in my password. Then for port, I don't know how well I can see this right here. It says address and port. Let's bring it up a little closer. What you want to do is for address, type in localhost. And for port, 5901. Now for BP, BPP, wow, you can go to 24 bit for BPP or change it to whatever you want and yeah so when you have those settings all configured to your liking just simply hit connect and oh my gosh look at this this is Ubuntu boom ta da voila fireworks bam 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 yeah look how exciting this is so yes, you are seeing this live, and this is not a trick. This is Ubuntu in GNOME environment. Now one thing, um, I, I was reading around, someone was asking whether or not you can bring up LXDE environment, which, if you like LXDE, you can go into the, term, the um, terminal and type in apt git install LXDE, something like that, and you can install that for your environment. Personally, I hate LXDE, and I prefer GNOME because I think it looks way better and neater. But, whatever you choose. Something about GNOME, it really kills your resources. But, yeah. Oh, another question someone was asking um, was whether or not this um, erases your Android system. This does not touch your Android system because this is a corroded, meaning that it's kind of running as an emulator on top of your Android system. So, your Android system is untouched by this. 
Okay, enough of this techie stuff talking. Let's get to the actual fun stuff. So what can you do? Well, right out of the box, internet is already configured. So I can hit Firefox. Boom. See if we can click that. Now, a cool thing, if you do have a, um, a keyboard and a mouse hooked up, like a wireless keyboard, a mouse, or whatnot, this will be just like notebook experience right on your tablet. So here I am booting up into Firefox, and as you see, internet connection is already set up. So I can type something in. Now here's the bad thing about this. Keyboard mapping. Keyboard mapping I was still playing around with, and if I have any updates, I'll give you that, that to you. So far, as far as keyboard mapping, you do have a keyboard for those of us who don't have a touch who don't have a physical keyboard. If I bring this up, I do have a keyboard right here. But the problem is, the keys aren't mapped right. So see I'm hitting G and J is coming up. So like I said, that's probably like an easy fix. And I'm sure somewhere in Ubuntu there's an on-screen keyboard setting. But until then, that's a little annoyance. But then again, if I have like an actual physical keyboard I can hook into this, that would be great. And I would prefer to do that. So anywho, here's Ubuntu and all of in its glory. And I have, you know, Firefox up here. That fun stuff. See if I can kind of close this out of the way. Oh, get out of the way. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Boom. Close. There we go. Okay. Wow. Okay. So we also have applications. You know, all the good stuff you have in Ubuntu. Bring this up closer once again so you can see this. Applications. Office. Graphics. And games. The Ubuntu Software Center does not work, but the Systematic, if I can find it, Package Administration, Systematic Package Manager, Syn uh, not Systematic, wow, Symbatic, Syn Synapitic, Synapitic, I don't know, I'm sure someone will tell me how to say it, but the Package Manager, <laughs> the point I'm getting at, that works as well and you can access your packages. I tried the whole Wine installation. I really could not get Wine to work, so if one of you can get it to work, that would be amazing. I tried it like try tons of times, and I was just mi missing a dependency, it was saying. So, as for Wine, I think it has potential to work on here, but I haven't been able to get it to work. See, so, you know, even if you pull it down, it's like on the list here somewhere. And even when I try to install it, it doesn't work, so. Yeah, it may work. It may work. It just takes a little tinker around with. So, what else do you have here? Well, you have places. Let's go to your documents. Now, one thing, you cannot access your Android partition from here. So, this is kind of like your own partition in which you have 210 megabytes of free space available. So, keeping note of that. So, in our documents, we have documents, which is filled with nothing. Of course, go to file system, and like I said, this is, I can't really touch the Android file system from here, I can't even access it. So, that could be good or bad, however you view that. Um, but you have all that. Now, one thing I do like is, once again, I have access to my network right off, right out of the box. So, uh, the computer is on our network, and I can go to my computer, open. There we go, and here we go, I see all my folders that I have shared on my network. So this is great having the ability to access this right from my tablet and right there, as simple as that. And downloads, and all this other stuff on the side, and of course if you're used to Ubuntu, you're kind of more able to navigate this than what I am. And we have that at the top. And other than that, um, you have customizations over in your system and administration you have all that stuff right there and preferences to change it so I mean overall this is a cool look at Ubuntu running on your tablet speed wise I would say I mean it's not the slowest thing and it's not the fastest thing so that's really all I can say about this battery life I use it for I was playing with it for about 30 minutes my battery life maybe went down maybe 7% so once again, I don't know how you view that, but I wasn't doing anything too CPU intensive. So I want to give a special thanks to Xenomax for that kind of inspired me to make this video. 
And also a special thanks to the developer who made the Ubuntu port. But overall, this is how to run Ubuntu on your Android tablet. I hope you all had success with this, and yeah, it's just one of those cool, fun things to do. So in the end, thanks for watching, and tune in for another galvanizing video. Thanks.